Okay, so let's start working on this radio. I, uh, I think the first thing I need to look at is this power cord here. Yeah. I mean, that looks to me like the original power cord. Wouldn't be at all surprised. And I'd love to keep using it. First, I'd be worried that it's one of these uh, cords that. has a uh, element in it to reduce the voltage to the uh, heaters. And for that to be the case, this has to have three wires in it. It's only got two. It's only got two. So, if it was mechanically sound, I might consider it, but here it's not. There's a few other spots like this where it's you know, you can't, can't uh, rely on the wire not being twisted pretty hard right in there. And since you know, the insulation here is crumbly, it could be crumbly anywhere along there. I'm going to get a short circuit. Don't want that. So, no need to keep this particular cord. Except affection or stupidity, maybe, one of those two. I don't know. So we're going to have to change that cord. And where's the cord go? That's a little curious. Well, it comes up through that hole and I haven't got a clue <laughs> where it's going. I can't see the hole well enough. center screen. See that thing moving? 
that's moving with the power cord. See, I got to take these off and get the, a view of this whole area, including the power cord coming in. So that, that's clearly, that's got to be the first real project, just as I sort of said before. start some uh, work on this radio after examining it yesterday and noticing a few important problems and there's probably some invisible stuff in here too. An important problem is this resistor here is burned out. This odd connection to this wire. Insulation on these wires is, is these blue wires here are shot. Yes, <laughs> I'm showing Draper exactly where the problem is. Yes, down here Draper. Okay, get some cutters and get busy here. And the power cord is a problem. Power cord. Thank you, Draper, for... <laughs> well, now we know what happened to the power cord. The cat ate the power cord when I wasn't looking. Don't chew on that. And these capacitors are a little suspicious to me. Um, and this whole arrangement in here is bad news. So that's what I'm going to work on. Right? <laughs> I gotta watch out for this cat. He's a strong cat. He gets a bite of you. It hurts. Yes, bite the wire there. So what should we do? What, what do you think we should do here, Draper? I think we should turn on the soldering iron, that's for sure. Yep, and... Good thing it's not plugged in, buddy. Shouldn't be teaching. Oh, don't chew on this wire. There's pieces coming off. But <laughs> so I think our work starts with um, heavy-duty cutting of this away. And this has, of course, gone rock hard too. Oh, come on, Draper. You're not helpful. No. What do you see there? <laughs> What's in there? Where are you going? What do you think you see in there? Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, you can't chew on those wires, mister. Are you the reason why things keep going wrong in the shop here? You're in the shop working when I'm not? Is that what's going on? Wow, I want to cut this away here without disturbing the uh, wires too much because they're so stiff. Are you bored because the other cats are sleeping? Yes, we have quite a few cats in this house. We have three plus one. It's three cats that belong to my wife and me, and this guy, Draper, actually belongs to my son come back from university with a cat. And I could tell you more cat stories, but I won't. I think I have told some already on other videos. But, uh, the Draper here is a very strong cat. It's very muscular. Let's bring you in for a bit of a close-up on this stuff. <laughs> no, I didn't really mean a close-up on him. <laughs> Just 
Pay no attention to the camera, Draper. No attention. Pay no attention. You're paying attention. Don't sit on the wire. And he has. He has sat upon the camera wire here. So if you suddenly go flying, you know who's done it. Why, this must have been a, a real bugger to get this tape on here in the first place. Is an easier way of doing this? Why don't we just cut the whole shebang out of there? That's a little easier. There's the wire. There's the wire. Okay, did that disconnect from anywhere? It shouldn't have. No, it's coming back from a tube connection just like it should. So we're just going to cut this monster out of here. But these caps are 10. These are only 10s. Wow, I would normally put a, a bigger capacitor in, in there. 450 volt. Pretty big, eh? Because today's... Uh, Capacitor doesn't look that big, that's for sure. Why, let's compare. Okay, so that's a 10. That's 450. Okay, this one's got five times the capacity at the same reading, 450. Look at that. So that dates these, I think. This puts them pretty old. And now we've revealed a little more in here. Yes, sirree. Have a look at this. Let me get this. I'm showing you capacitors you can't even see for crying out loud. I'm forgetting the camera angle. So these guys I took out. One of these is a 10, and this is five times the capacity. This is a new 47 microfarad, 450 volt, same volt rating. Look at the difference in the size. Five times as much capacity, so. There's nothing particularly new about these. British made capacitors. So there's our lead wire. It's stiff like a rock. I can't bend that at all. It's going to crack for sure. There's the other lead wire. And there's just going to the ground point. I'm sure this is a ground point. But this is what I've uncovered here. This thing. That's not looking very good. And this is definitely a target for replacement, and so is this guy. In fact, really, this guy is a target too. They're all, all the paper caps are, uh, appear to be in pretty rough shape. There's quite a few of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine that I can see quickly. Can I get that one? Ten. Maybe ten caps in here to change, along with the two, uh... hey, wait a minute, uh, these two are simply in parallel. So it's one 20 microfarad capacitor on the power supply here. I wonder if that's really the way it was originally. Typically, you use a two-stage uh, filter with two separate capacitors, a resistor or a coil in between. Oh, there's another wire that's in bad shape, this white one. That's terrible. Yeah, this white one over here, too. So, it's got one crack in it. Yeah. Wow, got some wires to change in here, too. Interesting that the different colors seem to last different lengths of time. Clearly, the formulation and dyeing of the uh, plastic has an effect on its life. Blue, not so good, at least in this radio, on those wires. Okay, next stage would be, we're not going to replace the uh, filter capacitor right away, because it's going to block up this area a little bit. I mean, these are pretty small compared to what was in there. I could probably find a far better way to install them, too instead of having it right on top of all this. Uh, 
could start going after some of these uh, bigger capacitors. Look at this thing. Yeah. That's ugly. What is it? It's pretty big. Or we could look at the power cord some more. Here, oh, here's the power cord. Now it can easily be seen right here. There's a knot to lock it. And then uh, connection made here. You know what I could do? I could cut this, retain some of this wire, which is bound to be more flexible than anything under here, pr preserve these connections, which if I cut these out, I'll end up working on this really stiff wire here. and It's really not a particularly good idea. These are really, really stiff. These ones really stiff. So, so there's an idea. I can cut and maintain some of this wire. Hook up the new cord to it. Now the wire itself doesn't look bad. Um, it's the wire covering and the mechanical poorness of that on the main power cord. Right? It's this kind of stuff here that I don't like. I can't see through it. I can't see what's going on inside with the other two, with, with the real wires. Sorry, that's going to be a short circuit there, and I don't want that to happen. And then we're going to have to figure out this resistor and this blue wire and what is happening there. is a little slow to refocus, isn't it? So I gotta be careful about how fast I move it around. Well, let's do the power cord, because it's gonna take this knot out of here. And reduce again the amount of stuff that's in this area for for working purposes. Even if I just cut it away right now. Let's do that anyway. Let's see if we make some more discoveries in here. That's pretty easy. And we'll cut this. Cut this here. We should be able to pull this out. throw this wire away. I'll hang on to it. I think I have a couple more pieces like this. Uh, but you don't see a lot of this anymore. This, this cloth, I don't know what to call it, call it uh, string covered wire? I don't know what to call it. But uh, I'm going to hang on to it. Oh, quick, somebody give me an elastic band. No, I don't. Yeah, that's something I don't have handy in my shop, or elastic bands. Hmm. We'll set that there. Now we can see a little deeper into the radio too, because I've cleared that out of there. There's the... Uh, that's the wire coming back from the rectifier. We need to hook up the capacitors too. Look, there's another piece of dung capacitor. Where is it connected? Where's that one connected? Oh, it's just connected to a ground ground over here. Down here. And it looks like crap, of course. Okay, so I've already got uh, a couple things cut away. That's the two, I'm trying to m make sure I don't forget these things. It's the two power supply capacitors. I haven't cut anything else away. So I think quite, you know, it's just as stiff as can be. I think this is the next guy, the, these two guys. So I'll cut this guy away at the top here, move him out of the way. Replace this one, then replace that one. 
think that's the approach I want to take. Let's see if I can get you a nice view of this. Sort of, kind of, not really. this guy right here and his his sister down below so we'll cut him away you know one of the things about doing this is I have no clue if this radio is even salvageable okay, that's good just check to make sure the tuning capacitor turns <laughs> Sometimes you get an old radio, the tuning capacitor is so frozen, it's not going to uh, it's not going to work for you. So that guy comes out. What is he? Sprague. 0.05. That's a 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Okay, that this this big capacitor will be replaced by this capacitor. Same rating. In fact, even a higher rating in terms of voltage. Okay, so he's going from here. Take that off. He's going from there to there. You know what? I can, I can replace that one already. You know, what I'm fighting against here is my own mistakes from getting too much opened up in the radio at one time. You see, I don't know. I could be called away at any moment. Got to run and deal with, like last night, my flooding basement. And then I, I can come back to the work here and just, frankly, I can't remember what I was doing. And that's where the mistakes come from. And I do make mistakes. I've learned that. I make mistakes. So I have to make sure I'm not my I'm not my biggest problem. And I hate to say it, I have been on a few radios. <laughs> I have been the problem. But ultimately I'm the solution, so I don't feel so bad about about that. I don't think I've ever actually really ruined a radio or anything like that. I don't think that's ever happened. And I've been pretty successful here. I got about a 98% success rate or 95% on, on radios that can be fixed because the odd one cannot be fixed because of things like I mentioned to you, the frozen capacitor or a blown uh, power transformer, that's another deadly thing for many radios. I got one in the other room. Beautiful looking uh, European radio. Just waiting for a new transformer to show up. And uh, so I can put that in and then this wonderful looking radio will uh, work again. But for now I can't do anything because the transformers are not easy to come by. And I'm not going to run out and pay big bucks for one. It's not happening. It's, I guess you can get pretty much anything you want. But it's a question of what you want to pay for it these days. And I'm definitely uh, cheap oriented here. I'm a cheapskate. crackling there. That can indicate moisture in the wax uh, around the uh, items I'm working on. Ah. Hey, 
hey, one done. <laughs> so tiny, eh, compared to what was there. Okay, now we can go after this ugly, ugly beast down here. That guy is a point zero zero five. Point zero zero five. Okay. Let's see if this guy's got long enough leads. Maybe he doesn't. Try a different one. Zero zero five, much longer leads. Now I guess some people might argue with my technique here, where I usually make new connections on the. Uh, lead wires from the old components that I leave in the radio. Looks a little ugly when I'm done, frankly. As you see all these solder connections kind of whoops, kind of floating around here. But this is the technique I choose to use, uh, not the least of which is it's much faster, easier, it's it's less trouble. And I like to cut these leads long on the original part when I'm removing it. So I don't lose my way, as I've explained so many times. Because if you solder back to the actual connection point, there's some challenges with that. Oop, looks like that one wants to jump off. If you try to solder right back, like for instance, this side's got a ground point on it. Can you see that? Just not quite, eh? It's just it grounded right to the chassis. And there's a big blob of solder on there. But if I attempt to solder right to the chassis, first of all, my little soldering iron just doesn't have enough heat in it to bring the temperature up high enough to fully melt the uh, solder. Secondly, if you do manage to melt the solder, you've taken a fair bit of time doing it, put a lot of heat into the chassis itself, which may have other consequences. I mean, probably not, but it could. And in comparison, soldering two wires together requires very little heat. The other thing too is when you loosen up the original connection, you may introduce uh, a fault in the radio through short circuit or, I'm sorry, I think I'm blocking your view entirely here. Um, you know, through mistakes made while soldering. Cold joint, short circuit, uh, some of these radios are very, very tight to work in. And just generally, you're causing more disturbance to the, uh, to the, the radio's components. You know, in a restoration, if your plan is to replace everything, or virtually everything you can, then maybe it doesn't matter. And then you're planning on disturbing everything. But in a repair situation, you're just asking for trouble. Okay, there we are. I'm not asking for trouble. I want no trouble. That's two of them done already. Who's next? 
Well, we could try these two, or we could go for this group of them in here. One, two, three, in there. All oh, looking pretty tough to me to do. I'm gonna prop up the radio a little differently here. Oh, this is a heavy, heavy, heavy radio. Holy smokes. I'm barely picking up with one, one arm. Now, what are you looking at? You're not looking at much of anything now. Oops. I don't want to deal with this resistor yet. I'm still praying a circuit diagram is going to come my way, but uh, not so far. Yeah, we could do the power cord at this point, too. Yeah, why don't we do that now, because uh, the way is clear here to it. Okay, what should we put on there? about this uh, kind of a European style looking plug here. Nice black cord. Yeah, I think we can put this one on. Not too long a cord. up through that hole there where the original cord came in. We're going to strain relieve it in a different way though. Let's see if I can get my fingers in there. Up you come. No, 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 no. Don't go through there. No, 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 no. You're taking a wrong turn there. This way, out this way. There we go. Okay. Now to strain relieve it, I, I want to tie it down to something. Um, you know, this would be. You, know, you just can't see much from there, can you? Let me give you a bit of a higher view for now. I could try a little bit of the zoom capability of this camera. Why don't we do that? Just crying out loud and get down there. Okay, let's give it the zoom try. out of focus, but then most of my videos have been out of focus, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Now, where to strain relief this? Because I can't clip it on here. The uh, band coming around here is going to make the radio rocky when it goes back into the cabinet. Of course, it wasn't even screwed in in the first place, was it? I could just attach it to that. Pretty handy location. Not the best thing to strain relief it onto something like that. Hey, there's nothing else. There's nothing in here. 
So either I go ahead on this, which I don't want to do, or I don't worry about it, that's another possibility, or I look for some way up on the top of the radio to strain relief it. Maybe that's a better play. I mean, I can't see the top of the radio. Yeah, I don't want to tie a knot in it and stick a knot up in there. It's my personal radio. I know enough not to tug on these cords. So for now, we'll forget about strain relieving it. And we'll just work on. Keep moving. Keep moving forward. So here's these handy little bits of wire here. I still don't like that as a camera angle. Let's try something else. I'm still learning about the capabilities of the uh, of this camera. And I think maybe if I put it here, I'll take some of the zoom off. looks pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good there. I like that. Okay, now I'm going to stop the video for a moment and go and deal with one of my cats. It's a good time to stop the video anyway. And I'll carry on in the next video with the connection of the power cord.